I've been doing this for a long time, actually over a decade now, technically. And some of you have watched my videos for years. Some of you, not quite as long. Some of you were maybe new to it. Well, thank you, all of you. But you'll hear certain themes and trends, and especially for those that go way back, even back to the old Off the Rope show, you know that I always harp on certain things when it comes to WWE's product. I don't want to repeat all of them now, but the point I'm getting at here is there are certain things that the more time goes along, the more time changes, the more the crap stays the same, and if anything, gets worse. And one of those things that I've harped on for years with the WWE is how often you feel like, what's the point? One gigantic waste of time where nothing critical happened. If you missed it, you felt like you didn't miss anything. There was nothing of substance or consequence. And as a result, you're just feeling like, if they don't care, why should I? If they don't make it worth my time, it's not worth my time. And that's a lot of what this SmackDown this week felt like again. It's a pretty predictable, pathetic pattern of behavior from WWE in this sense. You might get the occasional highlight or blip on the radar of something really good, like the opening segment, but it's a lot of crap. You look at it and say, that's why they're supposed to have an issue. Why are you doing that? Why would we care? Why did you go down that path? And you're left at the end saying, that's two hours of my life. I wish I could get back. Now, SmackDown opened up good enough, or well enough, I should say, with Brock Lesnar and Sami Zayn and their whole promo segment. Was Brock perfect? Like, was he a masterful wordsmith like his former advocate, Paul Heyman? Absolutely not. Nor does he necessarily need to be. Sometimes you could be a little rough around the edges in terms of your presentation, but it's the presence with which you do it, the way you come across that matters. And this segment between Brock Lesnar and Sami Zayn was really, really damn good with Brock trying to pressure Sami Zayn into doing the match with Roman Reigns tonight. In and of itself, like, as a segment, it was executed really well. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. It was easily the best part of this entire show because it all pretty much went downhill from here. Like Sasha Banks versus Shayna Baszler. You know, if you're going to say, well, this was a good match between the two of them and Shayna looked good and Sasha looked good. Now, that's true. But what's the point and why does it matter? What of substance or consequence results out of this? And maybe it's because I'm older now. Maybe it's because I'm even more jaded after all these years. Maybe I'm just too damn cynical, too damn negative looking. I don't know. But to me, I look at this television time that you get, especially with it being on network TV, Fox, prime time, Friday night. No wrestling company in the world has this. Only WWE has two hours of prime time network television on Friday nights or any night during the week. To me, I want to make every moment, every minute matter. And while you can sit there and say this is a good match, okay, and what's the point? What does this help? It doesn't elevate Shayna Baszler. If anything, it drops Sasha Banks down a level. And she's just kind of blowing in the breeze here. It's dumb. This whole happy talk segment. You know, I've, I've talked at length about the stupidity of they just couldn't help themselves. They had to make them happy, Corbin, instead of bum-ass broke Baron Corbin that people could really get behind. And when you're thinking about future opponents for Roman Reigns, like here's an example of a guy that could have been one. I understand sometimes that you want to have guys on this, on this level, guys on this level, guys on this level. But this shit is so damn boring and stupid now. You took a chance, the one chance you had to create a character with Baron Corbin that fans could really get behind. You could have changed the trajectory of his entire career, frankly, and that is not hyperbole. That is not recency bias. That is not living in the moment. That is a reality. They had something here and they fucking ruined it. Just like you could point to, 
Well, having Jeff Hardy and Drew McIntyre beefing with these two guys seems like a massive waste of Jeff Hardy and Drew McIntyre. It absolutely fucking is. Like, imagine what you could have done if you'd have had Jeff Hardy win the damn Battle Royal last week. You could have had him potentially face off against Roman Reigns at both day one and or the Royal Rumble and could have potentially even set up a Brock Lesnar-Jeff Hardy match at WrestleMania. And is that a match that I would be open to seeing and potentially be excited to see? Absolutely. Why the hell wouldn't I? And a lot of you would be down for that too and instead they're doing this shit. Again, what's the damn point? Just like what's the point of not including Drew McIntyre in that battle royal last week? That seems really stupid for the sake of being stupid. You know, the Viking Raiders versus Los Lotharios, and the Viking Raiders lose because of Boogs and Nakamura outside the ring. So after the match, instead of getting pissed and wailing on these guys that caused it a musical distraction that led to their loss, they're celebrating with them. What the fuck is going on here? It's just, like I said, if the talent doesn't care about whether they win or lose, then why would the fans? What's the point? This whole angle between Charlotte Flair and Tony Storm is starting over goddamn pies. Not fruit pies, not cream pies. Oh, God. Well, a lot of you probably want a cream pie Tony Storm. I understand. It's acceptable. But the whole thing, like, it makes sense for a Charlotte Flair, admittedly, to talk about how Tony Storm's not on her level. How Tony Storm isn't even worth her acknowledging. Frankly, it's one of the rare times I'm going to agree with Charlotte Flair. This seems entirely fucking random. But of course, it's a representation of the fact that you sent Bianca over to Raw. You really don't have anybody else that you could throw up at that level with Charlotte. So you're just randomly throwing somebody out there and hope it sticks and the beef is all starting because of fucking pies in the face. And it's too late for Tony Storm to do anything because last week she took two different pies to the face and looked like a jackass doing so. So you can't come back the next week and now she gets a revenge with one pie in the face. That's not how this shit works. And let's be realistic here. If we're talking about the real world, we know how women can be. God love them. But if a woman throws a pie in another woman's face, I promise you that other woman's not looking to sit there and throw a pie back. She's looking to throw down, you know, like the old hand slapping shit. Or she coming full blows. She ain't about to go tit for tat with the fucking pie in the face. That's stupid. Jay Uso versus King Xavier Woods. You know, how many times are you going to do Usos versus the New Day? We're almost at the end of 2021 now. And you talk about, oh, it's going to be another tag title match between the two of these teams at day one pay-per-view. How many times do we need to see this shit? You have other tag teams, or you should. Figure out something different to do. I get that these teams work very well off of each other. Their character chemistry is great. The stories that they can tell, they're great. The matches are great. But at some point in time, you get a diminishing return every fucking time you come back to this. It's slowly becoming the goddamn Cena versus Orton of the tag team division. Enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Cesaro versus Sheamus. You have all this history. We are the bar. And they tried to play it off. You were like a brother to me. And the match goes like three goddamn minutes. So last week you have Ridge Holland go into a full match, basically, and doesn't get the win over Cesaro. Now Sheamus comes out and in some effect, squashes them. I know it's not, didn't, wasn't quite presented like a squash. I get, I get you that. But the match was like three minutes. Why? What's the point? Even the shit with Naomi and Sonya Deville. What's the point? Like, this would have made much, much, much more sense if it was somebody like Tony Storm. Like, that's a way to establish a Tony Storm. That's a way to elevate her because you're putting her into a spot where you're raising her profile, getting her visibility. Naomi doesn't need her profile raised. Naomi already is established. And all you're actually doing here is making the Naomi character look worse. 
If this is the way that you transition Sonya out of the office role, out of the authority role, and into an in-ring role again, so be it. That's fine. But it didn't need to come at the expense of Naomi. There were other talents that would have made much more logical sense here. And Tony Storm would have been a fantastic person to put in this spot. Naomi would be a fantastic person instead to put in the spot where Charlotte's got an opponent. Send Naomi at Charlotte Flair. Again, what's the point with anything they do? And then the Universal Championship match. We all know I'm for acknowledging the Tribal Chief, our head of the table, and the magnificence and the greatness of Roman Reigns. But what was the fucking point here? Brock Lesnar comes out and attacks Sami Zayn and fucks him up. Just so that way Roman can squash Sami Zayn in like 30 seconds. Look, I get the angle you're going for here. Which is, Brock Lesnar wanted to make sure that he's the one that gets his hands on Roman Reigns. So that way he's the one that can take the belt away from Roman Reigns. I totally get that. Then why not show up last week and make sure there was no fucking winner in the Battle Royal? Just destroy everybody. Or enter yourself in and be the winner there. Basically, WWE took last week's show and built up to a Black Friday Battle Royal, used an entire show, and basically, in this one main event, totally buried it and just said we were just fucking around. We just used it as a plot device to advance the shit between Brock and Roman, which wasn't necessary. Like, yeah, it was stupid because Brock didn't even come out afterwards. You just really bad. Like, yes, the opening shit with Brock and Sammy was really damn good. And everything else afterwards, you're just looking at it as it's a gigantic waste of time. Because that's exactly what the hell it was. You're either rehashing old shit, rushing through shit, doing shit that is stupid, that doesn't make any goddamn sense, or just showing that you don't give a shit about what you do from one week to the next. Unbelievable. No, no, no. It's not unbelievable. Because we've called it for years, worst wrestling ever, and I've always said, hashtag WWE ruins everything. You get two hours of national broadcast television prime time, airtime, and this is the shit that you put out there. No wonder the audience has decreased so much in recent years. Because if customers, no matter how loyal or how dedicated they are, feel like there's no point, feel like you're wasting your time, they will see no point and they will stop wasting their time.